Yo, yo, yo. Unit 3, Populations Review. Number 1. Write an equation for the rule of 70. So the rule of 70 is simply, we take that number 70 and divide it by the growth rate. And this growth rate is um, a percentage, y'all. So if it says 1%, we use it as 1 and not change it. Uh, to a decimal so it's counterintuitive but um, that's the um, rule of 70. what is it used for it is used for determining the amount of years it takes for a population to double in size and this is called doubling time number two so we're going to calculate um, a b and c so a city has a population of 50,000 in 2012 if the population of a city grows at an annual rate of 2%, the year in which the population will reach 100,000 is, and the year it will reach 200,000 is. So we take the rule of 70, divided by 2, and we get 35 years for a population to double in size. So I take 35, add it to 2012 and so that will get me the year that it would double in size 2047 so 2047 and then i would take that 2047 and add 35 again and i get 2082 so 2082 b a country's population was 12 million in 1992 and in 2012, it is 24 million. If the population grew at a constant rate, at that percentage rate of growth was, so we're gonna use that doubling time equation again. So 70 divided by, we wanna know the percentage or the percent rate of growth, and then the year that it takes um, 12 million to get to 24 million, we subtract 2012 by uh, 1992, and we get 10. So I calculate, y'all. We need to isolate x by itself. So I simply switch 10 and x, and now we have 70 divided by 10 equals x. x is by itself. This is 7, y'all. 7 years or 7%. Uh, percent. Okay? 7%. Percent. So the percentage is 7%. And then uh, perform the following calculation. Show all of your work. In a particular year, a population has the following characteristics. The crude birth rate is 45. The crude death rate is 20. The immigration rate is 1%. And the emigration rate is 0.5%. The percent rate of growth for that year is so we're going to use the equation here input minus output divided by 10 so um, we get a percentage that way so we have um, the crude birth rate is an input 45 plus and I'm going to change that 1% into, um, or just keep it as is actually, minus, because what we're going to do with the 10 is um, going to make it into a percentage. So um, minus the, our output, so the crude death rate is 20 plus 0 0.5, all over 10. So when we do that, y'all, we get 2.55%. And this represents the national growth rate for this particular country in this particular year. So what are the four factors used to determine population growth? What is the equation? So we have um, the four factors here, y'all. We have, first off, crude death rate. So I'm going to use the space below here to answer the question. So crude 
death rate. Crude birth rate. And then we have as well um, immigration and emigration. The equation is uh, semi complicated. It is the crude birth rate, or uh, I'm going to shorthand that. So we have the bracket here. Crude birth rate plus immigration minus crude death rate plus emigration. All over 10. Number four. So number four. From the equation in number three, what factors add organisms to a population? Which one removes organism from a population? So we're going to be grouping it into add and remove. So adding would be crude birth rate and immigration. And then remove would be crude death rate and emigration. Number five, what is population momentum? So population momentum explains why a population will continue to grow even if the fertility rate, the number of children per woman declines. List two characteristics of an R selected species. So let's go with the easier ones, short lifespan, and then many offspring. Other characteristics include a short time to maturity, uh, small offspring, no parental care, fast population growth rate. So all of this match with our example species, the mosquito for R. Um, list two characteristics of K selected species. The opposite, long lifespan, few offspring. Okay, now number eight a whooping crane is a K selected species and it is endangered because of the following reasons. So, habitat loss is hunted for their feathers and meat. Slow population growth rate as a result of a long time to reach a sexual maturity, which is 5.4 years, is another reason. Number nine. A California condor is a, you guessed it, K-selected species. And it's endangered because of the following. So, you guessed it, habitat loss. Poisoning from 
bullets left behind by hunters. An orangutan is a K-selected species and is endangered because of the following, um, the slash and burn, deforestation, uh, mm. for palm oil plantations. They do not uh, reach a sexual maturity for 8 to 15 years, and females only reproduce every 8 years. So, yeah, that's why they are endangered. Number 11. A dodo is a K-selected species. And, it's, and it is extinct because of the following reasons. So, we have sailors. hunted them because they were easy to catch being large and flightless. Accounts suggest that the dodo only had one egg per clutch. So what I didn't do um, back in number seven is to pick our example species for case selected. Think big mammals like the elephant. Use the axes to the right uh, for the following. Draw and label a line that represents linear growth. So I'm going to draw it in um, my green line here. So linear growth, labeling it linear. Then we have the exponential growth. I'm going to draw in blue. Exponential growth goes something like this. And so we have exponential. And finally, logistic. And I'm going to be drawing it in purple. So it sort of starts off with linear then exponential and then it just um you know plateau so this is called logistic and then the carrying capacity i'm going to draw with red So, cool deal. It is labeled. Number 13, what is the difference between density dependent and density independent factors? Give examples of each. So I'm going to write small here, y'all. We're going to go with density dependent. So density dependent cause a population uh, per capita growth rate to change, usually to drop with increasing population density. Example would be competition for limited food among members of a population. I'm going to define density in 
independent here. So density independent effect per capita growth rate independent of population density. Our example would be natural disasters like a forest fire. Then number 14, survivorship curves. Using the axes on the right, draw and label three survivorship curves exemplifying early loss, late loss, and constant loss species. So we're going to draw it out, y'all. And then, boom, we have this. And this is called type three. OK, then we have this. Type 2. And we have this. Type 1. So type 1 example would be humans. Type 3. Um, acorn. And then type two, an eagle. Number 15, list the four most populated countries in the world and their current population size. We have China. China comes in at 1.44 billion. Number two, we have India with a population size of 1.38 billion. Then we have the United States. And the population size is 3.31 million. Or Three hundred thirty-one million. Then Indonesia two hundred seventy four million. And then we have number 16. Complete the following table by writing high or low in each box. So per capita GDP for more economically developed countries, uh, or I guess it should say countries, not counties, so countries, less economically developed countries. So this per capita GDP would be high low here, then degree of industrialization is high, low, infant mortality rate would be low, and then here high, per capita fossil fuel would be high, low, ecological footprint would be high, low, greenhouse gas emissions would be high, low, um, risk from heart disease would be high, low, risk from infectious diseases would be low, and then high. Number 17, how did China and India slow their population growth down? What are the advantages and disadvantages of these policies? So China introduced the One Child Policy Act, which limit the 
most people to having one child. The advantage of this was that it significantly slowed population growth. And then the disadvantage is that males are expected to take in their parents and with less offspring, there's a lesser chance of having a male. Parents will have a hard time transitioning culturally. So, males are expected to take in their parents and then parents will have a hard time transitioning culturally. Okay. On the axes below, draw and completely label four age structure diagrams that represent slow growth, rapid growth, negative growth, and zero population growth. And I'm going to be um, telling you all that this is going to be just a generalized shape of the population age structure. So if I trace my structure and it looks something like this, this right here, y'all, is called rapid growth. Examples would be Guatemala, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia. Then if I were to trace my outline, it would look something like this. So this is slow growth. US, Australia, Canada. Then we have something like this. So this is zero growth. This is Spain. Austria, Greece. And if we were to outline this here, so this right here would be negative growth. And examples would be Germany, Bulgaria, Sweden. Use the axes below to draw and label lines representing the birth rate, death rate, and total population size during the idealized demographic transition of a country. Include writs and direction, or sorry, include written directly onto the graph an explanation for each change in the birth rate, death rate, and total population size. So I'm going to go with the total population size first. We have this and then a plateau. Then we have our birth rate. So it fluctuates and then 
And then death ray does the same thing, but then it dips lower and goes there. Okay, so if we were to slightly um, extend that green, it would end up lower. So I'm gonna label the parts now. So this part here, y'all, stage one, the pre-modern. Then we have stage two, okay, and this is urbanizing or industrializing. Then we have stage three, This is mature industrial stage for post industrial. Total fertility rate is the number of children. who would be born per woman. Replacement fertility, I'm gonna write a different color just in case I bleed into the graph, which I will, is the level of fertility at which a population exactly replaces itself uh, from one generation to the next. Infant mortality, number of deaths per 1,000 live births under the age of one. Crude birth rate. number of live births per 1,000 in a year. Crude death rate is the number of deaths per 1,000 in a year. 21. Consider the graph on the right and explain what can be inferred from the data it presents. So, as education of females increases, the total fertility rate decreases. 22. What factors affect America's population demographics? So low infant mortality and long lifespan due to advance Healthcare. care. 
23, what is the number one way to decrease population size? So we have female education. And being in the workplace delays them from having children until a later age and they have much fewer children. 24. Why have death rates decreased in the last 100 years? So, better access to advance medical care and medicine. Urbanization. So we're going to be matching the 10 most populous urban areas in the world with its respective continent. Sao Paulo, Delhi, Osaka, Shanghai, Tokyo, Seoul, Mexico City, New York City, Mumbai, Using the space below, I'm going to be answering the questions here. So if it needs it, number 26, what is urban sprawl? The uncontrolled expansion of urban areas. What are three environmental negative effects of urban sprawl? So I can't fit all those three there. I'm going to write down 27 here. So the three effects are increased water pollution, increased air pollution due to traffic, finally loss of agricultural capacity due to development. What is zoning? So zoning is a process of dividing land in a municipality into zones in which certain land uses are permitted or prohibited. 29. Why do citizens leave rural areas to live in urban areas? Rural areas lack academic and economic opportunities. compared to metropolises. 30. Describe three environmental impacts caused by the increase of humans on this earth. So point number one, increased animal agriculture. and increased use of 
fossil fuel, which contribute to global climate change. widespread deforestation for agriculture and for development which contribute to climate change increases soil erosion and leads to habitat loss as you all uh, have seen in the slides before Habitat loss was one of the primary reasons for those case selected species to go extinct. Poaching, overfishing, and illegal animal trade leads to the increase rate of extinction and a decrease in biodiversity. These animals are hunted for meat clothing products and sport okay y'all that's it for today have a good one